you know, <laughs> you know. And so, so I started laughing, and I thought, yeah, I'm glad I said that because that was funny. <laughs> I like the comment about coming in through the back door. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> funny. Hey, man. Right, whenever you guys are ready. Oh, okay. And you can address that camera across from you. Wait, wait. All righty then. Okay, wait, I'm wait, wait, wait. Let me get. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just going to take a quick one. I'll just take <laughs> Make it hey, we're good. We're gonna have fun. I know. Yeah, That's don't fun. don't worry about it. Short and sweet. Yeah, you'd be good. Oh, do what you've been doing. You've been doing perfect. Have I? Yeah. Just okay. go ahead. That camera's ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, this is Coco with Endeavor Cinema Group. I am sitting here with actor Julio Cedillo, who is at the first annual Rosemarine Latino Film Festival promoting his short, The Finding. So tell us about the findings. Uh, wow, the finding is basically uh, the stories about a father and a young son who have to cope with the death of the mother. Um, I think it's a film that celebrates hope, and uh, you know, um, and it also celebrates uh, filmmaking, obviously, because the film uh, is actually not dialogue driven. You know, it's it's a film that was directed by a good friend of mine named Alonso Alvarez Barreda, who was being mentored by another director named Alejandro Monteverde who directed a movie called Bella, and which had won at the Toronto Film Festival. Yeah. And so it was Alejandro who called me to work with his young director, and uh, I looked at his script, and I, I realized it had potential, so we worked on it, and uh, pulled it all together, and shot it all in Tampico, Tamaulipas. Okay, and I know that, okay, so you helped co-write it. As far as, you know, like, um with, uh, is his name Alonso? Right. Uh, Alonso Alvarez Barreda you know, is the what director. What his central yeah. idea was, and then with you, what do you? What was your biggest? Uh, sure, idea? sure, the, the, right. sure. That's a good question. Uh, the, you know, when I first received the script, um, you know, the, there were some overreaching moments in the script, and so what I did as a film actor, because I've been doing this, you know, more than 20 years of my life, mm -hmm. is I could I could see traps that he would fall into within within his treatment, and so I was trying to address that, and so my you know, my input in the script was trying to refine it, trying to fine-tune it, find moments, cinematic moments, and uh, to simplify the story as well, because it was a little too complicated, a little too trite at times. But he, but he, he gave an excellent treatment. And so when he brought me along, um, it, was, it was sort of my job. And so, you know, we began to write uh, these adjustments. Mm -hmm. um, they had met me because of, you know, they were big fan fans of The Three Burials. Yeah. Which a film I was in, and so I was very flattered that they felt that way, and and I do respect Alejandro Monteverde. He's a he's a really fine director, and uh, you know, so to have him call me, I said, of course, of course, I'll go down there and work with this guy. So, what do you think it is about the finding that um, audiences have really liked because you won all these awards? I mean, what do you think it is that gets to them? Sure, I think I think that the reason people really um, you know relate to the film is because uh, you know it does deal with domestic violence, mm -hmm. but the film is not solely about domestic violence. I think what it also does is that you know for me as an actor and for Alonso as a director, our, our you know our objective was to tell a good story, and sometimes young directors tend to overcomplicate things. You know, being simplistic is actually much more profound. And I think when you when you pare it down, you know, you kind of left with those things in front of you, you know. And I think people responded to those things. Um, and it is, you know, it's a human story, you know, a father and a son trying to deal with each other and how he has to replace the mother's role. You know, when you have a father, you know, in our culture, um, you know, there's a lot of machismo, mm -hmm. and so sometimes. Uh, you know, the men won't do what women do, and that doesn't mean just cooking and cleaning. There's an emotional aspect to the it as well. The nurturing, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so now this this father has to sort of step into the role of the mother as well. And all of those things together, and also working, uh, was something that was new to him. And I think a lot of people related to that. I also think a lot of people related to maybe the domestic violence issue mm -hmm. as well. But I think at the end of the at the end of the film, you know, they they find there is hope. And I think that that those elements were the things they responded to. And about your character, I mean, I don't know what it's like to be an actor, but, you know, the, maybe the different challenges you have with each one, what did you think about this one? How, I mean, is it easy for you? Do you just no. jump in there and be like, okay, no. I'm going to do this? Well, the thing is, you know, my job as an actor is not, you know, I'm not a methody actor in terms of, you know, well, I take that back. We all have a method, mm -hmm. you know. 
my method of acting is, you know, first it's got to be believable. Uh, I'm dealing with a very young actor. I was actually very fortunate because they had cast uh, this uh, wonderful actor named Alejandro Felipe Flores. Uh, he's sort of like a little young Leonardo DiCaprio right now in Mexico. He's an actor from Mexico City. And this little boy was something special because he was so in touch with his emotions and his feelings. And so he actually, and I'll give credit to him, he made it a lot easier for me because I was a little bit, you know, it's hard to work with children, yeah. but he was on a whole other level. So my job as an actor in that film, you know, was difficult because, you know, I have to, you know, shake him up a bit. Okay. Uh, but he gave back tenfold. So, you know, acting is reacting. And so what you're seeing on film is, is that, you know, you're seeing real emotions, real, you know, real reactions. Yeah. And thanks in part to this wonderful casting of this really wonderful young actor. And as far as what's going on right now, um, you have something in common with cowboys and aliens. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, I do have something. <laughs> Fictional cowboys and aliens. <laughs> uh, you know, I ride horses, you know. Uh, I well, you're from Fort Worth. Yeah, I'm from Fort Worth. I'm from Cowtown, you know. So I, and, uh, you know, I do speak to myself, so maybe aliens kind of, you know, show up in my mind. <laughs> now, there's actually a film called Cowboys and Aliens directed by John Favreau. Um, stars Harrison Ford, Daniel Craig, uh, Sam Rockwell, Olivia Wilde, and a slew of other well-known actors, Paul Dano, Keith Carradine, um, wonderful Mexican actress, uh, Ana de la Reguera. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm one of those supporting actors in the film, and I play one of Daniel Craig's uh, uh, ex-gang members. And this takes place in the eight, late 1800s. And okay. basically... Uh, produced by Steven Spielberg and Ron Howard. Uh, so this is the other spectrum of movie making. I mean, we've been concentrating at this festival, the Rosemary Film Festival, on independent films and celebrating films and filmmakers. And, uh, and we got to see The Ministers last night, so I was really excited about that. You know, And seeing it on Skype. I know. Let me tell you, cutting edge, cutting edge uh, stuff going on last night mm -hmm. and, and watching Frank Reyes look at his audience. You know, There he is on the big screen in high right. resolution and great sound. I've never seen that. that I've, been to, cool. I've been to every festival in this country. That has never happened. I've never seen that. So it was really exciting to see that. But going back to your question, yeah, it's a blockbuster movie. I was very fortunate to be in that thing. And I play, uh, you know, Mexican gang member in that uh, in the late 1800s. And they get attacked by these aliens who are there to uh, wreak havoc on them. Okay. Of course, I can't say too much, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, as far as, um, you, you know, we were talking about this earlier and that's something I wanted to ask you when I found out I was going to be talking to you, you know, what did get you, give you that courage to say, you know what, I am going to act because I can say that, you know, as a child or myself and many others were like, oh, that sounds cool. That, that would be so cool. But you know, you do, you get, you know, well, that's not really going to take me anywhere. It's, it's too hard to make it in there or you know, you mentioned, for example, the Cowboys and Aliens, there's only you and Ana de la Reguera as Latinos, right? Yeah, 